Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie, and today I have Halloween DIYs for you, all with a little bit of a coastal flair and all using supplies from the Dollar Tree and some stuff from the Dollar Spot from Target today. So the first DIY, I wanted to make a little coastal bat sign. So I'm gonna use just one of these signs from the Dollar Tree. It can be anything. I just kind of wanted it to be square and something that could stand up on its side. And I'm gonna combine that with one of the little Dollar Tree slatted bat signs to do a fun coastal sign. Now, the only thing I don't like about these signs is they have the little bump out cardboard sign on the top. And it's just kind of like glued on to the one underneath of it. So it's just a matter of trying to peel this off without really damaging the sign behind it. Otherwise, any kind of thrifted sign, anything square is going to be good for something like this. And once I got that all cleaned up, isn't it kind of funny that they put the same image on it? <laughs> um, I am gonna mask that by just going over it with a coat of white paint. I just kind of want a blank canvas for this. And a lot of these DIYs are gonna be like um, black and white and blue color scheme for Halloween, which I think is really fun. Definitely goes with the coastal vibe, so. I'm going to use Caribbean blue mixed together with some ivory because I wanted a, like a nice beachy blue. And we're just going to go over the front and like all of the sides of the sign with that. Um, I wanted the blue sign and then we're going to bring in like the black bat. And we're also going to add some words and some fun details on this. So I'm making this for my cabinet for Halloween decor. And I have a lot of really fun, kind of like complimentary projects to go with it today. So that looks pretty good. We can start on our little slatted wood bat from Dollar Tree. I love the little slatted um, Halloween signs. I think they're really cool. I don't really need a hanger because I'm gonna attach it to the front of the sign. So I just use a little spackle to fill that up. And we're just gonna paint this little bat black. I have it upside down because I wanna kinda hang it upside down like that, like a bat would be hanging like in a cave. So I just go over all of it with some black acrylic paint, making sure to kinda get into the grooves to that back part of the sign as well. Kinda have to switch to a smaller brush for that. And I thought you might be able to see the edges, so I'm gonna go ahead and touch those all up with black as well. And I don't want it to be like just a solid black like that. So I'm going to give it a slight coastal farmhouse distress just by using ivory, acrylic, a chunky brush, and just distressing in one direction, blending any excess with a baby wipe. And I just want that like, you know, beachy look for that. And I think that's going to look really cute hanging upside down here on our little blue sign. So I'm gonna have it like hang from something up here, but I also wanted the sign to be big enough to kind of put a word or two underneath of it. And so I'm actually gonna use my Cricut for this. And I'm not sure what the fonts were I used on this. I'll see if I can find these and share these in the description below. I might still have the file for this. And I just put one a hang. I thought that would be really cute with a little bat hanging upside down. And I just did it with black um, vinyl. And we're just gonna add that straight to the sign just to make it nice and easy. Um, this is the black vinyl that I get on Amazon on the roll. I really love this stuff. And then I also use the paper transfer paper. Both of those should be available in my Amazon shop below. And I just put it right here on the bottom of the sign and an easy way to add a little personalization to that sign. Um, I haven't attached the bat yet. I just kind of put it there to kind of see where I would want it. Just want to make sure that my vinyl is good and down. I like to sand it sometimes to kind of make it kind of blend in with the board a little bit. And I also want to make sure it doesn't come up. So I'm just going to seal it with some Mod Podge, um, some matte Mod Podge to kind of give me more of a matte finish. Um, here lately I've been using like a matte vinyl that I get on Amazon with the white and I really like that because I don't tend to have to um, Mod Podge it to get that finish. I don't really like the shiny 
final look when I'm making a sign. And then another thing you can do is distress it. I'm gonna distress mine with a little bit of ivory, kind of break it up, kind of make it look more like a hand-painted sign, a little bit more coastal, kind of matching the distressing that we did on the little black bat. So I think we can put this all together now. I kind of want to hang it like this. And so I just go ahead and hot glue it to our sign. And then I actually want something for it to be hanging from. And so I'm going to actually use a twine for that, make it look like it's hanging from a twine piece. But I noticed that even though it is a sign that's kind of designed to stand on its side, um, it wasn't quite strong enough to hold the bat up. So I'm just going to use a little Jenga block from Five Below here just to weigh down the bottom to make sure this stands up the way that I like. And then we can go ahead and add some twine. I actually had some twine left over um, from one of those little shelf signs from the Dollar Tree. So I might as well use it. I just burnt off the fuzzies, put it underneath the little bat feet like that, and wrap that around the sign. We can secure it on the inside, just with a little bit of hot glue. And I think this DIY is complete. Just a really simple, fun Halloween DIY. But it's also got the coastal vibes with the beachy blue and the rope that the little bat is hanging from and a little bit of coastal distressing as well. And this is how it turned out, our little wanna hang bat. I love the blue and black together. I did a Halloween tear tray like this too and I really love that combination together. Okay, let's do another DIY. I just picked up a plastic skull from the Dollar Tree and we are really gonna transform this. I wanted, I didn't know if I would really be able to pull it off, but I wanted to do a driftwood skull. So I thought using a plastic skull would probably be a good base. Um, I was a little worried though about, I didn't really like the color of like the teeth and things that might show through after I add driftwood to it. And these parts are still gonna be visible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint mine with a little bit of ivory acrylic, just to brighten those up a little bit cause they are kind of black and dark. And like the things that will be visible um, are like, you know, the eye sockets, the nose, um, the teeth. So I just darken up the little eye sockets and nostrils with some black acrylic, just to make them look a little bit better than the paint job that was already on there. Once I have that all touched up and dried, this is the driftwood we're gonna use. This is the driftwood vase filler available at Target. Um, it's back like in their home decor section. It's normally like, I think $10 a box for this, but it goes on sale a lot. I always try to stock up on it when it goes on sale because it's a great driftwood for crafting because it's nice and flat. It's a kind of a light color, so you can always stain it if you want like a more colorful driftwood, but I actually find that it's easier to craft with than actual driftwood that I get at the beach. So the trickiest part is probably the face. So that is the area that I'm starting with. And I'm just trying to find driftwood pieces that are gonna kind of naturally fit with the um, little skeleton face and try them until they do, overlapping, hot gluing those both to the little plastic skull and to um, each other if I need to. And again, I want like the eyes, the nose, the teeth to all be visible. So I'm gonna sit here and fill in some of the chin too. And you can see definitely like a puzzle putting this together. I have to try pieces until I think they'll work and then I just attach them with hot glue. And the end result of this little driftwood skull is so cool. I really am so glad that I made this. Um, it really goes great with my coastal Halloween decor that I decorate within my house. I have a lot of skeletons and stuff like that, like skeleton animals, especially skeleton like sea creatures. And this is just another fun vibe to go with that with the driftwood feel. Now these pieces, they come in all different shapes and sizes as you can see, but you know, if you need a smaller piece, they're pretty easy to cut down to if you need to, but I'm trying to make do with what I have. I just dumped all mine out so I could really get a good selection just because this was definitely a challenging fit here for the driftwood pieces. 
once you get the face done though, it becomes easier because then you're just gonna be working with the back of the skull, the top of the head, and you can kind of do whatever kind of pattern that you want. I kind of have mine really no pattern whatsoever, just kind of having the them go whatever direction they're gonna fit and just keep attaching all of those with hot glue. And then I have this way sped up because it can be a little bit more of a time consuming process to make a driftwood project like this. But I think the driftwood filler from Target is definitely the key. I have bought this before on Amazon, but I kind of prefer this that's available at Target. I find that it's a little bit better deal. You get quite a few in a box. You're probably gonna need a couple of boxes, I would assume for this. I'm not really sure because I kind of like empty my boxes all together. So I kind of have a stash to go through at all the times. I also added a little bit extra here to the back of the head to make it sit flat um, like I wanted. And then basically it's just a process of trying to clean up any of your excess hot glue from all of the glue that you added to it. I pretty much put driftwood everywhere except for the very bottom of his chin. And I think he looks pretty good. I did want to distress his teeth a little bit with a little antique wax by Waverly to make them look not so perfect on this old driftwood skull. And I think it turned out pretty cool. What do you guys think about our little driftwood skull DIY? I think this would go really good for like coastal Halloween. It would also look really cool with like pirate decor and stuff like that if you get into that for Halloween. Um, but this is how it looks and how I constructed mine. And <laughs> he's coming to get you. And let me show you how I displayed it in my house. I displayed it with some blue coral decor that I had and um, with the other coastal Halloween items. I think it looks really kind of creepy yet cool. Okay, next DIY was really simple. I found this little ghost sign at the Target dollar spot. This was last year for $5, so I don't know if they're gonna have this this year. My dollar spot really doesn't have much Halloween yet this year. I don't know what the deal is with that, but I'm just gonna make it a standing sign using some of those little Jenga blocks from Five Below and a little boo sign from Dollar Tree. So hopefully this will give you some idea. Just um, if you had any kind of an arch sign like that, it'd be so easy to make this. All you'd have to do is paint it white, distress it, add a little black eyes and a mouth for a ghost face. It really couldn't be any easier. I do want to add a little bit of color to it. So I'm just going to use some Caribbean blue and white mixed together to give me a beachy blue. And I'm just gonna use a makeup sponge to paint the word boo. And like I said, this DIY was really easy because I found the ghost sign kind of already made, um, but I still wanted to include this. Um, if it gave you a little bit of crafting inspiration because I think he'd be pretty easy to reproduce if you could get the right shaped sign. So I'm just gonna glue the big boo word right down here in the bottom with a little bit of hot glue on the back. And then we're also just gonna make it a standing sign because I wanted to display it in my cabinet on my shelves for Halloween. So I'm gonna do that just by attaching some of those little five below blocks to the back. I love these, these little Jenga blocks. I buy these every year at, um, at five below. And I think they're like $12 a box now. You get a huge giant box of them and they work great for crafting. And I displayed mine next to my little black rope cat that we made in a DIY last week. And I think they look really cute together. So simple, but adorable. Our little ghost. I also got this little coffin at the Target dollar spot last year for $5. I hope they bring these back again this year because I think they're really cool and um, they're great for coastal decor. I'm going to make mine look creepy like the bottom of an ocean is what I was going for. So I start off but just by filling the little coffin shelves up with Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree first. And then I thought we would add like some creepy like skeletons and skulls, but also some creepy like sea creatures to kind of make it look like it's the bottom of the ocean. So I'm going to use one of these little tiny skeletons that come on this, the strand like that and kind of um, nest him 
like he is like a dead body here and laying in all the moss. Kind of push him down in there, work him in there to kind of be a fun little backdrop. And I'm going to add a little bit more moss around him just to kind of bury him a little bit. And he fits perfectly down there at the bottom. Kind of wanted to fall apart on me there a little bit, didn't he? And I do have another coffin idea that I made with supplies from the Dollar Tree, if you can't find this, a little later on in the video. So I thought one of their little plastic skulls would look great up on the little shelf like that. Those are these that just come in the little bag. And then I picked up a little black succulent from the Dollar Tree, and I thought that looked creepy for Halloween, right? So I am just actually going to um, kind of nest that down in there too, like it's kind of growing out like a little black succulent. And to make sure it doesn't go anywhere, I do hot glue it down to kind of stay in place. And then these are the little black like eyeball flowers from the Dollar Tree. They have some little branches on them that I thought kind of gave like a fun coral effect. So we're going to use some of those as well to kind of give it that creepy ocean vibe. It's just a matter of getting to them. And they have a couple other items from the Dollar Tree that kind of look a little bit coral like too um, in red if you wanted to add a little color to yours. But I was trying to stick to kind of black on this one. So I do a piece of like that coral looking branch in the top and the bottom and working more Spanish moss as I go to make it look like it's all kind of embedded. Now for sea creatures, I found these. These are the little grow animals from the toy aisle, a sea turtle and a stingray. The sea turtle is already black and creepy, but I thought we could also make the little stingray look black and creepy as well just by adding a little black paint. These are those little creatures that grow in water, but they tend to take paint just fine. And so instead of a bright red stingray, we just made ours black. So I'm going to nest the little sea turtle down here, the little stingray up top. I do secure them with a little bit of hot glue to try to help them stay in place because this coffin's going to be standing up on its side. Now it's a cool like wood finish but it does kind of have an unfinished edge around the top of or the front of the coffin so I'm going to finish that up a little bit too. I'm also going to add a little tiny starfish that I get those on Amazon and some of the little seashells from the Dollar Tree. These are the ones that come in the little glass bottles. So it's definitely giving me like creepy Halloween bottom of the ocean vibes. I really love how this turned out. I even did one that kind of looked like a little bit of a snail there on the little black succulent and kind of hot gluing those to make sure those stay in place. I did add a little bit of black shading to the skeleton because he didn't really have any painted detail there in his face. And that's super easy to do with just a Sharpie to kind of make him look creepy like the little skull on top. And I think it looks pretty cool so far. Like I said, I did want to finish it up and give it one more touch. And so I'm going to use the thicker twine from Walmart and just glue a simple frame all around the coffin just to give it another little texture and finish off that unfinished edge. And that is it for this DIY. Like I said, I hope Target Dollar Spot brings back these cool little Halloween shelves this year. You'll have to let me know if you've seen them in your stores. I find here lately I have to travel to other towns to go to the Target Dollar Spot to find any of the good seasonal decor. But this is how it turned out. Super creepy, right? Everything was from the Dollar Tree except for the little starfish and the little coffin shelf itself. Okay, the next DIY, I found these great little skeleton seahorses at the Dollar Tree, and I thought these would make a great coastal Halloween DIY. Now, the only thing I don't like about them is they're kind of like pinkish orange for some reason, but otherwise they're really cool, especially for $1.25. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give them a little seahorse skeleton makeover. I'm going to just darken their little eye sockets in with a black Sharpie. And then we are going to brighten them up with some ivory acrylic paint to kind of make them look more like my other like little skeleton animals that I have. 
So I make sure to use a brush so I can kind of get down in between. I guess they have like rib cages on this. My son was like, that is not scientifically accurate. I'm like, I know, but look how cool they are. They're <laughs> little seahorses, right? And I think they look way better in this like more ivory bone color than whatever that color was before. Now I wanted to do a base to do a fun little like creepy ocean scene with these guys as well. And so I'm gonna do that with just a little Dollar Tree oval sign and I can attach them to it too because as you can see, they kind of want to tip over a little bit. I think like these little signs like this make great bases. It's just about the perfect size. So I'm gonna hot glue them to the sign. Now, I don't want them to be exactly the same height. So I hot glued one directly. The other one, I just used some like orange wood round stickers that I had from the Dollar Tree just to kind of give me a little boost to make this one sit up a little bit higher, but it's not really gonna interfere with my design here. Then I wanna make the bottom of it look creepy like the ocean floor. So again, I'm gonna use Spanish moss, this time just hot gluing it down to kind of keep it in place and cover up that entire bottom part of the seahorse sign. And then we can add some other like little sea creatures and stuff in it to make it look kind of cool. Right now, you know, the Spanish moss just kind of has a crazy shape, but basically you want to cover it and then you can go in, give it a quick little haircut, trim it up, kind of get it back down to that oval shape that we started with. Now for the decor, I wanted some other uh, little ocean creatures. So I'm gonna use some more grow animals, this time the sea turtle and a little crab. And then also a little plastic starfish. I get these on Amazon as well. And I am gonna give a little creepy Halloween makeover, especially to the little crab. Again, the sea turtle is already black for some reason, which is cool for Halloween, but usually I have to paint it to use those. But I love crafting with these because these are available pretty much year round at my Dollar Trees in the toy aisles, and they're great for coastal crafting. So we're gonna make this little crab instead of red black, because I want it again to go with my black, blue, and kind of wider ivory color scheme I have for my Halloween DIYs. I went ahead and painted the underside as well, just in case you could kind of see underneath of it a little bit. I wanted him all to be black. I'm gonna leave the starfish blue because that goes with my color scheme perfectly. And so I just hot glue on our little sea creatures into the Spanish moss to make them look like they're crawling around on the ocean floor. So the sea turtle, the starfish, and our little crab. And then I thought it'd be cute to add some seashells as well. Again, these are the little bottled seashells from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna kind of strategically glue some of those around as well. And I really think it made these little Dollar Tree skeleton a seahorse into a fun little ocean scene. Perfect for coastal Halloween decor. And this is how it turned out. If you see these cute little guys at your Dollar Tree, be sure to pick them up. They're so fun to craft with. I do use them again in a DIY later on in this video. Now I decided I wanted to kind of finish up the edges, give it a little bit of a rope border. So I just used some Dollar Tree rope and hot glue that all along the edges of the sign just to kind of give it a more finished appearance. And an extra coastal touch is always nice. Just gonna kind of close that up on the very back of it. And this little DIY is ready to go. And this is how it turned out. I think it's so cute and looks super spooky for Coastal Halloween. I display mine here in my cabinet with some blue coral. And I love the little surprise blue starfish little pop of color as well. But I love the little seahorses, they're so fun. And then I also just use some fishing um, net. This is the fishing net from the summer section at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna scatter that around in that display just for a little bit more coastal decor. And you'll see that here later in a minute when I show you how it all comes together. Now the next DIY sign, I'm gonna use just one of these little hanging trick-or-treat wood signs from the Dollar Tree. Um, combined together with two other little wall shelves to make a fun little Halloween sign. And I'm gonna do it in that black, white, and blue color scheme that we've been using. 
Now I love making signs out of these little Dollar Tree shelves because they're a nice thick wood. Um, they don't warp like some of the Dollar Tree signs. And so I just glued two together to make a larger sign like that. And it looks like two boards, you know, side by side to make a little pallet sign. Now I don't need the hanging holes here in the trick or treat sign part. So I just fill those in with a little bit of Dollar Tree spackle. And now we can start painting these and putting these together. This DIY is gonna be super simple, but I love how it turned out. I love the color scheme. So sometimes those holes on the sides require a little bit of sanding, but otherwise we're gonna leave those as is and just cover the back sign with black acrylic paint. And you see how well that raw wood on those shelves takes the paint. So one coat is plenty. And then we can paint the little trick or treat sign. I want that like contrasting colors to put on the front of that to really make it pop out. So the first thing I do is just paint the whole thing um, with a coat of ivory acrylic. So it kind of has that white on black feel. But we're also gonna add a little bit of color on this one too. Even though it's kind of all one sign, it doesn't really have any like um, noticeable edges. We're gonna make it work. So I'm just using Caribbean blue and just the little jack-o'-lantern parts we're gonna paint. And I'm just using a tiny brush so I can kind of stay in right exactly where I want it. It's gonna make those little jack-o'-lanterns really kind of pop out from the sign. And it's gonna go great with that blue and black color scheme. So everything is painted and dried. We can go ahead and just simply put this together by putting some hot glue on the back of this sign. That hot glue was really hot. Did you see the steam coming from that? And add that to our sign. We are having an old fashioned Florida thunderstorm outside right now. Not sure if you can hear that. It is thundering and pouring down rain. Now I do wanna make this a standing sign. And so to do that, I'm just gonna use a piece of Dollar Tree craft wood, kind of a chunkier thick piece and just hot glue that on the back. But you could always use whatever you wanted if you wanted to make yours standing as well. If you don't go all the way to the bottom, it makes it lean back slightly like that. It makes it stand up great on its own. So here it is, our little trick or treat sign. This was so easy to put together and it's a nice impact piece in my cabinet because it really shouts trick or treat with that contrasting ivory against the black background and the little blue jack-o'-lanterns are super fun as well. Now the next DIY is a little coffin project that I was talking about. I picked up two of these little coffin signs from the Dollar Tree. One kind of has a border and one doesn't. And we're gonna put them together and make like a 3D coffin that's gonna kind of stand up on its own. So the first thing I have to do is just cut out whatever's in the middle. Mine had jack-o'-lanterns and this wood from the Dollar Tree is pretty thin. So if you cut it enough times with like a razor blade, you can get that to pop out, give you a little bit of a custom cut. You might end up with a little bit of a wavy line, but you can always touch that up a little bit. I sanded mine down as well to make it look a little bit better. And then I don't really need the hole in the front of it either. So I fill that in with a little bit of spackle. Now I want my coffin to be blue. So I'm using Caribbean blue, acrylic and a makeup sponge just to paint that blue. And I want to have like a really cool like mummy inside of a coffin feel, but I want to go with that black and white and blue color scheme as well. So for the back of the coffin, I'm gonna use this piece. It's a little bit more solid than the other piece, but you could probably get it to work if you had even the same piece. Cause basically we're just gonna cover the back of it with black. I thought black fabric would be cool. And so I picked up some black fabric from Dollar Tree to kind of cover the back of it. I just used a white chalk pen and pencil. I actually got that at Dollar Tree too, to sketch that out on the black fabric so I can cut that down to size. Now there is writing on the back of the sign. So once I Mod Podge this down, you can still kind of see that design through it. I was hoping that it would cover it. Maybe if you were to use like black um, poster board or cardstock or something like that, you might get a little bit better coverage than the fabric, but I kind of thought the fabric would be um, fun in the bottom of the coffin. See how you can still kind of see the, the writing through there because of course it's got the cutouts. 
So I decide to use some black, black poster board to kind of fix that. So I just sketched that out. And you can see I was cutting out some mermaid witches for a tear tray with that. And I just glued that on the back of it to give me a more black surface. And that seemed to help a little bit. Then I'm just gonna seal it on with more Mod Podge over the top because I kind of like that feel better than the fabric. Cause I don't want you to be able to read through it. I want it to look like, you know, solid wood. Now to make the little mummies, we're gonna use popsicle sticks. These are the super jumbo ones that I got at Walmart. But you could always do this with Dollar Tree ones too. You're probably just gonna need a little bit more popsicle sticks. And I just start cutting them out, going a little bit larger each time to try to make like a mummy body, like laying in the little coffin and then kind of shrink it up and arch it for the head. I also wanted to have like little arms like crisscrossed here. And so I do that with little popsicle sticks as well. Just cutting everything with scissors, sanding them if necessary. And then it's just a matter of painting these and kind of putting this all together. Whenever I um, paint like thin wood products like this, popsicle sticks, Dollar Tree wood, I love using a makeup sponge for this. It works so well. Uh, you don't use very much paint and you don't get very much on the sides and back and stuff like that. So I think that looks pretty good. We can then start putting our little guy together. I wanted this to be a little 3D in nature because I'm going to put the coffin together like that. So I'm going to use some of those little wood cubes from the Dollar Tree to make all the little pieces of the mummy stick up. And I just hot glue those onto the back of our little popsicle sticks, painted ivory, and then glue those to it, leaving like some spaces behind it. For the eyes, I decided to make a little gap like that where I could go in and cut down some more of that Dollar Tree black poster board to be behind it that we could actually add some eyes to. I just do that with a white paint pen, just putting a couple of dots on there and then using a glue stick to kind of glue that back under them so the little mummy eyes are peeking out. I found that hot glue worked a little bit better for that. And then we're going to continue that mummy design by hot gluing the little cubes to the back of the popsicle sticks, kind of alternating my gaps, like which direction they're going. I wanted it to appear like a wrapped mummy. And I think the popsicle sticks give you a great illusion of that. I'm going to repeat that all the way down here to the little feet here of our mummy. And then we just have the little crisscross arms that we cut down to kind of go across the body and I just hot glue those directly on. Now we need to find sides for our little coffin because I, again, I want it to be all 3D and kind of stand on its own. For the sides, I thought the easiest thing that I had from the Dollar Tree that would work would be the little Dollar Tree wood rulers. So they come in a two pack. It's just a matter of cutting those down to size. I'm gonna do it with like the little bump out part like inside so the sides kind of have like a flat appearance. So I cut those two rulers down for each side there. And these are so easy to craft with because all you have to do is take the stickers off. I just took them over to my saw to cut those down. Um, but you could probably do the same thing with popsicle sticks, but it's probably not gonna be quite as thick and sturdy as mine turned out. So I got the rulers cut down for all the different pieces. Now it's just a matter of painting those. I want them to kind of blend in with the Caribbean blue that we did on the top part of the coffin. And so I just go ahead and paint all of those on the sides that are gonna be pointing out. And the corners are gonna be a little rough on these cause I didn't like do any mitering or anything like that, but I think we can make it work. So I'm gonna start with the bottom by hot gluing that onto our back coffin piece, the top and the bottom. And then um, you can just attach the top like that. I think that's gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all the rest of the sides on by hot gluing those to the edges, kind of lining them up as tight as I can in the corners. 
And this is definitely a way you can make like a little coffin display like this if you can't find like that one that I found at the Target dollar spot earlier. Now I'm going to kind of just sit the top part of it on that little ledge of the rulers. That works out perfectly and provides a great base for that. So I just do a bead of hot glue all along that part of each one of the rulers. So I can sit the little top of the coffin around the edges, sign right there. And I love the colors on this. I think it's so cute. I love the mummy theme. And I just touch it up with a little bit more paint because part of the ruler was exposed there. And as you can see, my corners aren't great, but I think it works pretty good for crafting. Here it is, our little mummy ready for decorating. I'm going to stand it up straight upright on my cabinet for display. And this is how it turned out. I think it's so cute with the little eyes peeking out from behind. And I definitely love this color scheme. Okay, the next DIY, I wanted to do like a, a fun, like little light up moon, if you will. So to do that, I'm going to use a couple items from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use a black candlestick, um, one of the little battery operated lights. Um, they have like little lights inside of a little light bulb and a Dollar Tree Christmas ornament. You can always use, they have like the, almost like a little snow globe right now in the Halloween section that would probably work the same for this. But basically I just wanted these little battery operated twinkle lights in this to light up the little ornament to make it look like a Halloween moon. So I just have to try to figure out a way to put this all together. I'm not gonna use the light bulb part at all. I just wanna kind of sit the ornament on top of this where I can feed all the little lights in to make it glow inside. I don't really want it to be the gold color though. So I thought I would just paint it that Kirby and blue color. You're not gonna be able to see very much of this in the final product, but you'll be able to see a little bit of it. So it's gonna give it just a little bit of a blue accent. I tried to avoid the on off switch there on the bottom and the battery so I don't cause any problem with that. And then just trying to test for size if the little ornament from the Dollar Tree is going to fit on there well. It doesn't fit on there perfectly, but I think we can still make it work. So I just take the little string lights and feed them inside the globe like that. And then to make it look like a little moon, I just take pillow fluff from an old pillow and fill it up to make it look all modeled like a moon. When you light it up at night, it's gonna give you that same cool moon effect. And since it doesn't fit on there just perfectly, I just use hot glue to attach it instead because they're basically about the same size. It does leave you with that gap if you're gonna use a Christmas ornament like that but I'm just gonna use some Dollar Tree white rope to kind of fill that in. And that's gonna go still with my blue, white, and black color scheme. This is the thicker white rope, but you could use either one. And I'm just gonna start down there um, where the two come together. It's also gonna help hold it together a little bit. And just hot glue this around to fill in that gap between the two um, pieces. And it's gonna give it a fun coastal um, vibe as well. Now I cut it off here. I was originally thinking that I was going to only add rope to this part, but I kind of wanted to fill it in more. So I did do a second row here where the rope goes all the way up along the side of the ornament. And I really liked how that looked. So I decided to do it on the bottom too, um, just to make it a little bit thicker down here. So avoiding the on off switch so I can still turn it on and off. I just wrap some more around the bottom, filling up most of it um, with a little bit of the blue trim still visible. As you can see, I kept kind of adding to it until I was happy with it. And I just wanted it to be a cool like rope base that I can then put on the little candlestick to hold it up. So um, I just wanna make sure this works. So I'm just gonna sit it like on the candlestick. I can't glue it to it because then I wouldn't be able to turn it on and off because the switch is on the bottom. 
So it's going to kind of go together like that, which I think looks pretty cool. Now, to make the moon look creepy and fun for Halloween, I thought we would use some of these little cupcake toppers from the Dollar Tree because there are some little black bats in there. But if you can't find these, this shape would be pretty easy to cut out. So I found that there was two bats in there, so that's going to have to work. They are on toothpicks, so I just go ahead and remove those. And then we can just attach those to our little lit up moon. I really like the effect that that pillow fluff gives inside. I just hot glue the body so I can kind of make the wings stick up a little bit if I want. Kind of like they're flying in front of a Halloween moon. And display it on the candlestick just like that. Pretty easy. I definitely had to use the rope to fill in some problem areas on that. But I wanted to test it out to see if it looked like a moon and it lights up really cool. I think this is a really fun Halloween decoration. Um, mainly because it lights up. So this is how it turned out. Our little Christmas ornament, <laughs> Halloween moon, with a coastal rope border there and a black candlestick. Goes great with all of my blue, white, and black Halloween decor, and I think it looks creepy for Halloween. Now the next DIY, I wanted to take one of these little Dollar Tree plastic skeletons and kind of make a really cool little skeleton plant for Halloween. I do want to stick with that color scheme, so instead of leaving the little skeleton this color, we're actually going to paint him. He had a little hanger there on top, so I just go ahead and trim that down. And then we are just going to paint him all over. But first, I'm going to remove his legs. You'll see why here in a little bit. I'm going to kind of need them to be separate for my design. So I wanted to make it blue, so I want to do a nice beachy blue color on our skeleton just for fun. So I'm going to use Caribbean blue mixed together with some ivory to give me this nice beachy blue. If you don't want to mix your paint, it's pretty close to the cloudless color by Apple Barrel. And I've recently discovered that you can get that cloudless Apple Barrel paint as well as a few other colors on Amazon for about 50 to 55 cents um, a piece with free prime shipping. And so I have added a few of those um, to my Amazon shop below under paint. So if you wanna pick up some of that cloudless color and you hate going to Walmart as much as I do, you can totally get those on Amazon. I have no idea how they can afford to ship that for so cheap because that's like the same price that you'd be paying for it at Walmart. So cool find. And so I just go over all of it. We're going to use all the skeleton. The reason I need it to be all separate like that is because I want to sit it in a plant. This is the plant we're going to use. It's just a little boxwood $5 cheap plant from Target. These go on sale a lot of times for about $3.75. I just wanted any kind of a house plant look and I do not have a green thumb so a fake plant it is. Now to make the pot look a little bit more special for Halloween, I thought we could use some of this really pretty black ribbon from the Dollar Tree and just wrap that around the white pot and it's going to give it the much needed colors and fun for Halloween. So it's not quite a, a flat circle, but you can just wrap that around and get that to fit tightly and we'll just glue that in the back of it to itself, trimming off the excess. And then what I wanna do is take that little skeleton, make it look like it's sitting in the plant, like kind of like a part of the plant. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second. So here is the skeleton. I want the hips to be like down, like they're actually sticking in the dirt. The, um, since it's a fake plant, there's really nothing that you can like stab into. So I'm gonna have to use hot glue to attach it. So I just hot glue it down into that plant like to the back of the plant, like it's kind of peeking from behind the plant with its arms kind of like just draping down inside. Like that, just make sure he's standing up straight. And then I want it to look like, you know, he's part of it, like sitting in it. And so then we'll have to attach the legs. Since the legs are not jointed on the Dollar Tree skeleton, I do have to take them apart even more at the knee to get this to work but I just pop these back on the sides of the hips because that part is jointed 
It's the knees that aren't jointed. So this is what we have so far. And then we're just gonna have to kind of make a faux knee here to make the knee bend here so that I can have the little skeleton feet sit directly on the surface in front of it. To do that, I first hot glue them in place, which isn't ideal because there is no kneecap or anything like that. So you're kind of left with like the hole in the top of the bone and it's not super sturdy, but I, I'll show you what I do to kind of make that a little bit sturdier. I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue the other side on too, making sure both of my feet are flat on the surface in front of it. And then to make that stronger, I just take some masking tape and go around the joint of the knee. And we can kind of blend that in by repainting that with that same blue color that we used and making that look like that's kind of all one piece. It's gonna kind of hide that. You won't, really won't be able to see that once you touch it up with a little bit more paint. So I just paint all over the masking tape. And this DIY was really easy to do. I love the fun of the blue skeleton. I think that's super cool. And I really like the idea of putting it into a plant because I think that's super fun. So here he is, our little skeleton plant. It goes with the blue, white, and black color scheme, but it also gives you a dose of fun with him sitting inside of a house plant. So that's one way you can take those cheap skeletons from the Dollar Tree, even if they're not jointed and stuff like you need them to be, and you can kind of make it work. But the idea of a colored skeleton, I think is really fun. And this is how he turned out. I love him. Okay, um, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about my Facebook group. I always have it linked in the description below. You're gonna find out when I post new videos here on YouTube and you'll get to see what everybody's been crafting. I also have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube on all of those. Okay, next up, we're gonna take one of these cute little tinsel ghosts from the Dollar Tree and I wanted to make a coastal little ghost, replacing all of this cheap white tinsel with some Dollar Tree white rope. So it's just a matter of removing all this. I always like to cut it. I find it comes off a little bit better. It's kind of an odd shape with the little arms coming out of the side of the ghost. So I'll show you how I kind of deal with that because basically I just want to wrap it with Dollar Tree rope which does kind of waste some of the rope because you're not gonna be able to see the rope on the back, but you can kind of see what I came up with. So the first thing I did was cut the arms off. I can always reattach those later once I get it built out. And I was trying to decide if I really needed to remove the tabs on the side. And I decided in the end that they might get in the way. So I just used some like heavy duty scissors. These are like the KitchenAid scissors. And I just snipped those off just in case they were gonna cause me trouble. Um, and when I go to wrap them all in rope. Again, these are the little arm pieces. I'm gonna save those. I'm just gonna reattach those. Once I get the ghost part of the body all wrapped in rope. To do that, I just start here at the little ghost tail, hot gluing the Dollar Tree rope to the back. And we're just gonna simply wrap this. Pretty much you don't have to use hot glue on this. It's just gonna kind of stay in place if you wrap it tight enough. And it just makes it a little bit easier if you wrap it around like this. Now that's about how far one package goes. I wanna make sure that I start and stop my um, packages of rope here on the back where you won't be able to see it. And I just do that by hot gluing that on right where I stopped and then continuing to wrap that around. And the reason that I cut the little ghost arms off first is that I could just do this simple wrapping pattern and I wouldn't have to do anything weird when I would come to the ghost part um, or the arm part of the ghost. So that's how far a second package went. So it's gonna require um, I think three or four packages of the Dollar Tree rope to cover this whole guy, but he definitely has a fun look. I love it. I love doing um, rope, especially when you're doing redoing one of the little tinsel projects from Dollar Tree. They have great shapes and cages underneath of them that are perfect for crafting. So here at the end, I just kind of want to glue it to itself, making it smaller as I go up to kind of form the little head of the ghost. 
And then at that point, I can reattach my arms and I just hot glue the little plastic cage back to itself by kind of feeding it through the pieces of rope there on the side so I can kind of reattach it. And then um, we can always cover that with rope too. And I found that that was definitely the easiest way to do this project, at least for me. So now I can just start here um, on the back of our ghost. I glued it to the body to kind of make it all one piece here in the end, right? And I just wrap it around like I did before for the other direction. So I'm going the opposite direction that I did for the body. And then I just kind of use hot glue to kind of glue it to itself, hiding the plastic cage right inside. So we're gonna get that cool, like kind of floating ghost effect. I also add an extra piece of rope to the back to kind of glue the two pieces together. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here on the other side. Now I was trying to decide what would be the best way to hang this. Since I've pretty much closed in all the structure on this, I probably should have thought about a hanger before, but I didn't. So I decided to try to use just a ruler um, that I could kind of string on the back. And then I thought I could just attach twine to that and make a simple hanger. What I found though is that it didn't hang very good. It kind of wanted to stick out from the, the wall. And so I did have to add to that a little later. Maybe a simpler like hanger on the back would actually work better than this, but this is what I did. I just hot glued that on the back where you wouldn't be able to see it. And then for the ghost eyes and mouth, I decided to use seashells. I thought that would be really fun. And so I'm just gonna paint them black to look like little um, ghost eyes and a mouth. So I just chose two about the same size for the eyes, which were a little bit smaller than the one for the mouth. And I think that's a fun coastal Halloween touch to make these out of seashells. I'm just gonna glue them straight onto the rope with some hot glue right here where I think they would be. And I think that is the perfect last detail. Like I said, my hanger did work great. I just um, use a wood domino to make a smaller hanger here at the top, closer to the head. That worked better um, than the ruler that I used before. But this is how it turned out, our little rope ghost. I think he's so cute and coastal. You could always add a few more seashells as well if you wanted to, but I kind of wanted just to leave mine for the eyes and the mouth because I think they're kind of fun. Isn't he cute? Um, not too spooky, but a fun Halloween decor. Now, I'm sorry about the lighting on this DIY. I want to redo another little tinsel ghost. Um, I don't know, this was old software that kind of corrupted this video file, but the DIY is cute, so I still wanted to show it to you, even though it's super flashy, I'm sorry about that. I'm not gonna remove the tinsel for the, this one. I'm just gonna mask it. And I had some like ivory colored felt left over from another DIY that I thought we could just kind of cover the top part of the tinsel. That way I wouldn't have to remove it. I could just kind of mask it a little bit. Only like the top of the arms and the head I really wanna cover up because I wanna drape some of the Dollar Tree creepy cloth on top of that to make a little ghost that kinda of looks like one of those like little suspended ghosts, if you will. So I just kinda of make kinda of like a little hat <laughs> for my little tinsel ghost and just hot gluing that to each other, just kinda of masking the tinsel. I guess you could always remove the tinsel if you wanted to, but if I didn't need to, I wasn't gonna do it. Ah, I hate the flashing light, so sorry about that. There was no way to fix that, but I didn't want to lose this footage because this DIY turned out really cute. So this is the creepy cloth. I am just gonna kind of um, double, quadruple it up to make it thicker and just lay that on top of the ghost, trying to get that ghost shape. Then I can just go around and trim off the excess cloth until I kind of get a fun shape for a ghost. So I just drape it over trimming it down around the sides, also trimming it like along the sides of the body. And then I can just kind of um, wrap that around, hot gluing that to the tinsel underneath. That's gonna be all hidden behind all that creepy cloth to kind of give it a little bit of a shape. So hopefully you can still kind of see what I'm doing on this. Um, I just wanted to have that ghost shape that we had before, and then we can decorate it a little bit. I'm gonna use some of the little plastic round stickers from the Dollar Tree for little eyes. I just painted those black, 
And then I have some black felt that we can use to make a cute little ghost mouth for this. And then we're gonna add another little coastal touch to it as well. So I'm just gonna use hot glue to attach our little eyes. I just wanted a simple two eyes, a little like screaming ghost mouth there right in front. And then to kind of like give it a little bit more shape and to frame it out, I'm just using some of the thinner brown Dollar Tree rope to kind of outline that, give it another little bit of a coastal feel. It's kind of cool without it, but I kind of liked the touch of adding the rope to it. And I just kind of draped that along the arms there. Just cutting down a piece and hot gluing it along the shoulders and the head of the ghost. And then I'm going to come down and also do the sides. Also, I'm going to bring that rope around and kind of frame out the bottom of it too. It just gave it a little bit more shape, even though I kind of want the arms to be like all droopy like a sheet on a ghost. So this side, and then just kind of using that cage for my reference to go along the bottom. And I think it just added another little fun touch by framing it out with the Dollar Tree rope and another little coastal touch. You could always add like, you know, a seashell or two if you wanted to give it a more coastal touch, but I think the creepy cloth and the rope kind of makes it look cool. It's gonna go great with my decor. And again, sorry about that flashing light. I've done so many things to try to fix that video and it just doesn't happen. But I still wanted to show it to you because I think this ghost is really cute and I wanted to kind of give you an idea of how I put it together. No tinsel removed in that process, but you totally can't tell that's a tinsel ghost underneath there. So a quick, easy little ghost DIY idea for you. Up next, I thought we could redo this cute little ghost sign that I got at the Dollar Tree and give it a fun little coastal makeover as well. It has a little boo word on front. I just go ahead and pop that off. It's also covered in lots of glitter like Dollar Tree likes to do. So I try to sand that off so that we can DIY this little guy. Now I did want to kind of disguise like the face and stuff on there because what I wanted to do was to see if we could cover this ghost in sand. I thought that'd be a fun coastal idea to make a little sand ghost, but I didn't want the eyes and the mouth shining through. So I kind of masked that with just some ivory chalk paint just to kind of give me a blank canvas. Then we are going to try to attach sand to it. So I do an even layer of school glue all over. And then I'm just using white sand from the Dollar Tree, sprinkling that all over the school glue, doing a layer of sand on top of the ghost. Now I like to use like the spray glue that you can get at Dollar Tree too to, for the second layer of glue. And then I sprinkle down some more sand on top of that. Spraying the top of that too until I do it until I get a good coverage where I really can't see any of the ghosts through it. I can only see the sand. Now you're going to want to make sure to give this a good dry before you work on because all of that glue is going to be really wet on their sand. Now I wanted them to hold a sign so I'm going to use one of these little wood signs from the Dollar Tree that says boo and I just paint that with some Caribbean blue color and um, I'm going to just replace the hanger that was on the top of the sign because I want to make it a hanging ghost like it was before. And then I'm also going to attach that boo sign to the front of it, kind of making it look like the little go sand ghost is holding the little boo sign. I thought that would break it up, give it a little bit more color. And then I thought it'd be super fun to use some seashells from my shell stash for a little ghost eyes and a mouth. I found these oval ones worked great for the eyes, but when you're hot gluing onto sand and you have a rather thick layer of sand like I did, you have to make sure you go pretty deep with your glue because what you want to do is, you know, glue it to the sign behind it, not necessarily to the sand. So definitely push it on there until you get good contact to make sure that your little shells stay in place. I had to try a couple times with both the eyes and the nose, but then I finally got it down. And I'm just going to leave them their natural brown color. I thought that would be cute. And then I want to attach the little boo to the front. And um, I don't really want to glue it to the sand. I want it to look like he's holding it. So I glue some twine to both sides of the little boo sign. And then we can drape that over the little ghost arms. 
kind of like that. It's going to make it easier to attach because I can just hot glue the twine to the back of the little ghost arms. And we did it. We have a little sand ghost sign. I think he's so cute. I love the idea of using the seashells for the ghost eyes and the mouth. We've done it for a couple DIYs today. And I just removed the excess twine, reinforcing our little sign on the front. And this little DIY is complete. I think he's so cute. And he's really actually held up well in my Halloween storage. I really um, like that. I added the little sign to him, otherwise he would be a little bit plain, but you know, the sand is not perfect on him, but it really shouldn't be perfect if it were like a little sand ghost. So I think he has lots of character. Now for the next DIY, you know how um, Dollar Tree has like little pieces of carpet sometimes? My Dollar Tree had white. I saw this and I thought, oh my gosh, I could make like my own like ghost rug for the bathroom with a Dollar Tree piece of rug. So I had a little um, wooden ghost from the Dollar Tree that I'm just using for a template, but you can kind of make your ghost any shape you want if you're able to find a white rug as well. But I'm just trying to sketch that out with a Sharpie on the back of the rug so that we can cut this down and do a little custom rug. So I wanted to have like a little funny tail, a little ghost tail like that one did. And I'm trying to keep it as even as I can. My little arms aren't quite so even, but I'll show you how I fix that. Now to cut it out, I just use a razor blade and I'm just going through the back I'm cutting along right where I um, drew on it. And then I'm also using a pair of scissors to try to remove some of that excess. You're gonna wanna get through all the different fibers. And this rug was fairly thick, but I think this was a fun find and a fun idea um, to do with it to make your own little custom Halloween rug. I don't think this would definitely hold up outdoors, but it definitely worked well for an indoor rug. And I just keep going around cutting that down. Like I said, I didn't get the arms too even, but I will even that up in a little bit because it did bother me a little bit. But again, a ghost is pretty subjective, so um, you can kind of make your shape any way you want it to. I just wanted like the head, the arms, and like the little creepy tail. Now, when you cut that, like it's almost like a shag rug, um, it's going to be a little messy. So I'm just going to clean up any of the excess fibers around the edges. And I will finish that up to kind of make it look more like a finished rug here in a minute as well. And this is me trying to fix my uneven arms. I'm just going to cut this other one down to be a little smaller, too. And then we can finish decorating this. I thought we could frame it out and make it look coastal with a rope border. And then I also wanted to do like eyes and a mouth. And I decided to use little stencil daubers from the Dollar Tree and some brown acrylic. I chose brown um, to match my rope, but you could always do black as well. And I think those made the perfect little eyes and mouth with the different sizes for that. And then I'm going to hot glue Dollar Tree rope all along the outside perimeter of the little ghost rug. And this gave, you know, my cut edge a really finished look. It also gave it a little bit of a coastal vibe, which made it turn out really cute. This is a really fun DIY. I think this is the first time I ever really um, constructed my own rug. Um, I've decorated rugs before, but I think this is the first time I built one. And I think it's really a fun idea. So I think he's looking pretty good. I'm just going to clean up any of the excess hot glue and make sure he looks perfect. And touch up his paint a little bit because it wasn't quite as solid as I wanted. And I think that looks pretty good. So here he is, our little Dollar Tree ghost rug. I think this is a really fun idea. For a bathroom, um, we used it in our guest bathroom for Halloween, and I think it's really fun. It was definitely fun to put together. And pretty simple. Again, you can kind of make your shape whatever you want. Hopefully you can find a white one because that was perfect. 
Okay, then next DIY, I found this little ghost sign at the Dollar Tree, and I thought we could give it a fun coastal makeover as well. Of course, it's color covered in Dollar Tree glitter, just to kind of um, cover up the glitter and finish off the back of the sign, because that's going to be the back. I just used some Dollar Tree vinyl, um, shelf liner, and covered that up. It's not going to be perfect for that shape, but I like the shape of the sign. I think it's nice and ornate. Now it's just a matter of painting it. I wanted to do a beachy blue. So I'm using Caribbean blue paint to go all over the back of this to give us a fun blue background for the ghost sign. I am going over the unfinished back of the Dollar Tree sign, which is not necessarily wood. So it is gonna take a couple coats to give me a nice blue background. But I thought we could use the little ghost cutout that was on there before and maybe add a word to it to do a fun little blue and white ghost sign. It turned out really cute. So it definitely needed a second coat and now we can start decorating the little ghost that was on there. I thought we would just use the back on that as well. It's gonna make it, um, you know, kind of our own thing instead of using what they had designed on there. And so I'm just trying to clean up all the adhesive on the back and then we're just gonna paint that ivory with some ivory acrylic. I wanted to add like a boo word to it too. And so I'm gonna use a Dollar Tree wood boo sign to decorate the sign as well and some other coastal touches. I want it to look distressed. So I also distressed it to try to give it like a slight distressed wood feel with some antique wax by Waverly and a baby wipe. Going back and distressing with the original ivory to make sure it's not too dark. And then I also want to distress the blue sign with ivory to give it that coastal farmhouse feel that I love. Blending that all in with a baby wipe until I love how it turns out. Then I decided which boo sign I was going to use. I'm going to use this one from the Dollar Tree. I think it works perfect with a ghost sign. We're just going to paint that ivory as well. And then I'm going to want to like kind of do like a little bit of a distress on that as well. So I do Antique Wax by Waverly on the boo word as well. And then just draw some little eyes on. I went back and forth on my eyes on that ghost. I drew them on with a brown marker. Then I thought that they were too dark, so I distressed them. But then I go back and draw them back on there. So I couldn't really decide what I wanted to do with that ghost, but I did want them to kind of look old and distressed like that. And you can see that the boo sign is made out of wood. And so it actually painted and distressed a little bit better than this piece did, but we're gonna make it work. So I do the ghost right here at the bottom of the sign, and then we're just gonna glue the boo word right on top. That's gonna leave us lots of room on both sides of the sign to just um, to decorate it a little bit more. And this is me playing with that ghost again, distressing it. I drew the eyes back on, as you can see. And then I thought I could just use like seashells for my stash to decorate the sides. The colors are gonna be perfect, the whites and the tans. And I just hot glue those on the sides. I wanted a variety of different kinds of seashells and sizes, but I wanted to fill the whole sign up. And this is how it turned out, my little coastal boo ghost sign. I love the colors. The blue white brown effect is a little bit softer beachy, beachy tone than the blue white black but I think he turned out really cool and the ghost is super sweet. I think distressing is key on them, but I like the shelves being all the natural colors and stuff as well. Okay, the next DIY, we're gonna do a welcome sign, but it's not gonna be like it is right now. So you just need a long sign, doesn't matter which one. I had this long fall sign and I'm gonna show you a really fun way to make a coastal Halloween sign. Now I'm gonna make my own chalk paint. I'll try to find a recipe to this. I found this in a blog. You can use this calcium carbonate. I get it um, on Amazon and you can mix the calcium carbonate powder with water and acrylic paint to DIY your own chalk paint. And it's way cheaper and I love to save money with crafting. So I'm gonna do that to give me a nice um, Kirby and blue color to cover our sign um, to make a fun background. Now again, this Dollar Tree sign had glitter on it, so I'm just gonna use some contact paper just to cover the back to make it look more finished. Definitely make the glitter part the back of the sign. If you had a plain long sign from the Dollar Tree, it would work even better. So that's just a great way to deal with the back of those signs when they're glittery like that. And I will have to redo the hanger too, since I'm gonna have this now be the front. And then, um, 
just to cut off the contact paper, just take a sanding block from the Dollar Tree. It's gonna give you a perfect cut around the edges if you do need to reuse a Dollar Tree sign that already has something on it like this. Now we're gonna test out that great chalk paint that we made. And um, it does a great job. It's a nice bright blue Caribbean blue color. And I wanna do a welcome sign on this. Um, but I also want it to be like a Halloween welcome sign. So it's a really fun take on it. And this is for my entryway. So I'm going to hang stuff from this too. So it's going to actually end up being kind of a longer sign too. And even a little bit more coastal. Trying to deal with the bowing in the sign. Sometimes Dollar Tree signs, not too flat, especially when you're painting them. But we're going to see if we can make do. I think it looks pretty good. Now for the letters, I thought we could spell out the word welcome with the Dollar Tree plastic bones. Now some of them will have to be cut down a little bit, but basically just with the straight bones, we can spell out the word welcome like that. I'm just gonna cut off like the knuckle joint, I guess, on the end of those when I need to, to kind of make them go together where they only kind of have like one joint um, in each place to kind of make the little side pieces, I guess, of the letters a little bit shorter and make them all fit. Now, these bones are kind of a tan color. They're not what I would call like a typical skeleton color. I don't know why Dollar Tree makes their bone colors like that color, but they often do. So I'm just gonna make some more chalk paint by mixing some white acrylic with the calcium carbonate and water. And we are gonna paint all of our bones before we attach them that ivory color, and I'm glad I did because it did make a nicer contrast against the blue sign. And they do look, I think, more like bones when they're painted the ivory color and, and not that brownish tan color that was on there. So I really only have to paint one side of them because that's basically all you're gonna be able to see, but I did use a brush to get down on the sides too. And now it's just a matter of putting together all of the letters. You're gonna get, kind of want to keep your spacing tight. I kind of mapped it all out before, so I know that they will fit. And I'm just putting hot glue on um, the tan backs where there isn't any paint on the back of those, and then gluing them down and spelling out the word welcome. I guess you could do any kind of word with this. You could do um, like a, a, a Halloween word, like haunted or something like that too. That would be really cute. But I thought this would be a really creative way to do a fun little welcome sign for my entryway. I have like a lot of skeleton animals um, that I like to decorate my entryway with. And I think that um, this bone theme is going to look really cute with that. Now I wanna frame it out to make it look a little bit more substantial and give it a little bit more of a coastal touch. So once I get all my bones attached, I just framed it out with some Dollar Tree white rope. This is the thicker one, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go around all four sides with that. It's gonna kind of make your sign look a little bit thicker if you're working with a thin sign like this from the Dollar Tree. Um, if you have like a thrift flip sign or something thicker, um, that would be even better because you could kind of do this on anything. But I just wanted to kind of show you on Dollar Tree if I could. So I'm going to replace the hanger since we um, had to take it off the other side. And I just used hot glue to attach twine to the back. And then I used a little bit of burlap to help make that a little bit stronger. Now I told you we were gonna add to this and I'm gonna use a fishing net from the Dollar Tree to kind of drape under it so that I can put like um, some skeleton animals and things hanging in it to kind of add to it. So I just glue that net onto the back of the sign too with a little bit of burlap helping to glue that down. And I kind of want it like, you know, at a diagonal pattern, you don't want like your fishing net hanging too perfectly. And these are actually pretty big. So I'm gonna kind of cut it down to size um, double it up here to make it a little bit stronger and attaching that to the other side as well until we have like a little triangular shape of net hanging down. Now these are the little animals that we're going to add to it. The Dollar Tree Skeleton Mermaid, the Dollar Tree Skeleton Seahorse to go with my coastal feel. And again, I don't really like the color on these, so I'm going to paint those with that ivory chalk paint that we mixed up to make them look a little bit better. And then I thought it'd be really fun to hang those in that net below the welcome sign. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the skeleton mermaid from the Dollar Tree and give it a coat of the ivory chalk paint all over too. 
And I already had another one of the little skeleton seahorses from the Dollar Tree that had already painted ivory. So I'm gonna have a couple of those, I think, mixed together with my little skeleton mermaid. I also add like a skeleton bat, I think too, cause I thought I needed a little bit more, but I'm gonna distress these all with a little antique wax by Waverly. Once I get them paid ivory, just to kind of make them look a little bit older and a little bit more character. Now, so I have two of the seahorses. I just painted the eyes of all the skeletons with a black to kind of make them look a little bit better. And then I thought we could use like a little Halloween word as well, one of the little galvanized metal words, because I have this whole fishing net to fill up the wall. And then I thought a Dollar Tree bat would be cute too. Again, they're that tan color. So I just gave the bat a coat of the ivory chalk paint all over. And then we can hang all these creatures in that sign underneath the welcome sign to decorate my wall in my entryway for Halloween. I give him a few darker eyes too for a little contrast. And this is how it turned out, our little bone welcome sign with mermaid skeletons, a beware sign. We've got our little seahorses. And then I thought it'd be really fun to hang like a bat upside down here at the bottom. Super fun for a coastal Halloween. Pretty cute, right? I love the blue and white. Hey guys, I wanted to let you guys know that I've introduced memberships here on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you can help support me here on YouTube. You're gonna get early ad-free access to my videos like this one, and you're gonna get a few other perks as well. And I wanna give you a huge thank you to the following Crafty Beach Bums. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job. Susan Edmonds, Sandra Ray, Carrie R., Tracy Knight, Verna Noctegal, Julie Miller, Nancy Wunner, Jan Zalata, Tammy Coates, and Janae Farrington. Thank you so much for supporting me here on YouTube. I appreciate you so much. And now it's time for the final reveal. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit the like button. It really helps the algorithm. Comment your favorite Halloween DIY below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Enjoy the final reveal.
much for watching. If you'd like to watch more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here.